Hello friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and if this is your first time here, welcome to Booked and Busy. So today's video is a very exciting one. In this video, I am going to be choosing and reading my 200th book of the year. I'm currently reading my 199th book of the year, which is You Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca. And I wanted to make a bit of an occasion out of my 200th read, especially coming off the heels of a pretty lackluster reading week so i have chosen 10 adult high epic fantasies that are at the top of my tbr that i am just chomping at the bit to read because i really want my 200th read to be a four or five star book i really want to just fall deeply into a world and be immersed and be in love and just feel all the things that I feel that remind me how much I love reading and how much I love talking about books and how much I love creating content about books and just being deep in there. So I'm not going to give you like a synopsis for each of these 10 books because I am going to the first part of this video is going to be me reading and reviewing the first chapters of them. So that will be a little bit redundant. So I am going to be reading the first chapter of these 10 books and give you my thoughts about them. I will be choosing one to be my 203 after I finish the Eric Roca and then I will be reading that for you. So let's talk about the 10 books. Uh, most of them the first chapter are around 20 pages so I'll end up reading like 150 pages just trying to figure out what book I want to start with but let's just get into it so the first one we have is the ember blade by chris wooding this is the first book in an epic fantasy series only this one book is out um the first chapter is six pages and this is a recommendation from murphy napier um i heard her talking about it last year and it's said to be for fans of brandon sanderson and john gwen of which i am Next up, we've got a recent release and a recent pickup, and that is Kagan the Damned by Jonathan Mayberry. This is a grim, dark fantasy novel, and chapter one is literally only one sentence, so I decided to just go with the shortest uh, pages that's also the short one of that, so I'll be reading the first six pages, which are chapter one and chapter two, so a very quick read for this one as well. The next one is We Ride the Storm by Devin Madsen, the first book in the Reborn Empire series. This is a grim, dark fantasy. Three of the four books are out in this series, and I think the fourth book is coming out later this year. The first chapter is 16 pages. Next up, we're jumping into a bit of a longer one. So we have Empire in Black and Gold, uh, first book in The Shadows of the App by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This is the first book in The Shadows of the App series. And this is a 10 book series, but the first four books tell a complete arc. And Adrian Tchaikovsky is an author I'm really intrigued by. I have a number of his books on my TBR. And this one was mainly put on my radar by Alan over at the Library of Alexandria. This first chapter is 19 pages. And then last in this first stack, we have The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah, the first book in the Sand Sea trilogy. Um, this is another recent release. I'm going to just hand out in May. The first chapter for this one is 13 pages. So we have a stack that's a pretty much all like 20 to 25 pages long, the first chapter. So the first one, we have A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin, the first book in the Song of Ice and Fire series. Uh, chapter one for this one is 17 pages. And uh, this is a book that, like I said last year, like if I don't, this is like one of my priority books to read in the second half of the year. I'm saying that again this year, but I'm really like kicking it into gear this time. We've got The Final Strive by Sarah El Arifi. The first, um, and this is the first book in the Ending Fire trilogy. And the first chapter of this one is also 19 pages. This is, I want to say, a June release. Next up, we've got Ordinary Monsters. I think this is another June release. And this is by Jay and Miro. I don't know if this is the first book in the series or a standalone. I'm not sure. But I was so pressed for this book that I, like, ordered it via Postmates. Um, and this is, like, historical fantasy type. Uh, and the first chapter of this one is 20 pages. We're down to the last three, and these are the longest first chapters. So first up, we have The Gutter Prayer by Gareth Hanrahan, um, the first book in the Black Iron Legacy. Chapter First chapter of this one is 21 pages, and I think three books are out in this series, but it has become a quartet, so the fourth book is coming soon-ish. And this was put on my radar by Patrick. Next up, 
Um, the penultimate book we have is The Wolf by Leo Carew. This is the first book in Under the Northern Sky. And this first chapter is 24 pages. And this is put on my radar by Leanna over at Leanna's Library. She just has so many good things to say about this. One of her favorite books. She's reread it multiple times. I'm intrigued. And then last but not least, a book that is at the top of my TBR, a five-star prediction, another book that I say is a priority for the rest of the year. I said that last year and this year, and we have Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson, the first book in Malazan, Book of the Fallen. So the way this one is set up, chapter one ends on page 55, but chapter one doesn't really get started so there's a prologue which starts on chapter 25. So I'm gonna be reading about 30 pages between the prologue and chapter one. But yeah, these are the 10 books that I'm gonna be reading the first chapter of and hopefully maybe I'll get through all 10 or maybe I'll get halfway through and I'll find a book I'm like this is the book. I don't know if I like quit on the video that early, but hopefully I find a new favorite in this stack. So I'm going to read probably the first chapter of those two short ones that are like six or seven pages. And I will come back to you periodically with my thoughts on those chapters. Okay, so I have read the first chapter of Kagan the Damned. So I'll tell you a little bit more about what this one is about. In this one, we follow this man named Kagan, who is the captain of the palace guard. And he is sworn to protect the royal children of this empire. What well, starts with the cha the first chapter is like he wakes up to his damnation around him and he is drunk and he has been with like a tavern winch or whatever and he is sick and he is throwing up and he hears all these sounds and over the course of the second chapter he realizes that there is this big battle happening outside around him and that essentially hope is lost. And that's really the entirety of the first chapter is just him being sick and him coming to realization that the noises and clanging that he hears around him isn't, you know, the hangover that he has. It's a battle happening and that people were caught unawares. And the smoke is because the place that the city is on fire. Um, I know this is supposed to be grim dark and that this is going to be a story of him trying to redeem himself and of him trying to get justice for his slain the people that were slain that he was supposed to protect but i think i would give that first chapter well the first chapter is only one sentence but i would give that first six pages probably like a three star i'm not the most intrigued to continue just based on that beginning Next up, I read the first chapter of The Ember Blade. So this one, I don't think the person that we were following is our main character. And I think going into chapter two, we're going to follow our main character, who is Aaron. In this first one, we follow someone who was one of about 50 people who had led this rebellion in this town. I think it was called Silver Fork to overthrow the Croton Empire. And it was supposed to be like the spark that sparked this uh larger rebellion but that's not what happened they were defeated quite quickly and we end off this first chapter with the character er erdrick being tortured to try and find information about someone else and his dream is that this empire is ran out of town and that uh this sword this ember blade which is apparently quite essential it's like a, a, it's almost kind of like an excalibur situation um, a land under occupation, a legendary sword, a young man's journey to find his destiny. I will say as far as the writing in here, the writing in the actual chapter was just fine. But there is this little bit at the beginning um, that's like this, this story from this like larger book in this world that was really intriguing. Um, the writing in here definitely felt a little bit more epic. It felt more like what I'm used to from this type of fantasy. So I'll probably give this first chapter like a 3.5 star because even though it wasn't about the main character and we really didn't get much of the world it felt very ominous and it felt like a direction i would be interested in traveling so next up i'm going to tackle the stardust thief and empire in black and gold okay i'm back it's been a little while longer because the two chapters that i read were a little bit longer but let's first talk about the stardust thief and this first chapter listen i'm in here i'm locked in 
this first chapter was definitely like 4.5 star vibes like i was immediately intrigued um i recently not that recently but recently enough read the day of that trilogy and so the the mythos around jen and all that is like very intriguing to me and then following a character who is a bit on the gray morality side was very intriguing and i want to know more about what's happening and the setting already just seemed really lush and really interesting so definitely a fan of it this is probably right now the number one contender for my 200th book next up i read empire in black and gold the first chapter of this one was 19 pages and it's very interesting um so i didn't even tell you what the start of Steve is about so this is the first book in a trilogy and we follow i think there are three main pov characters but the pr main person that we follow is Lily, who is the midnight merchant she's a criminal and she has the help of a gym bodyguard and she like sells magic to people um we haven't met any of the other povs yet but um the sultan blackmails her into finding an ancient lamp and she goes on a journey uh, by her bodyguard and the sultan's oldest son so um, assuming there's going to be a bit of a romance there i'm excited to see what happens this one it started off a little slow and i say that because this like really throws you in it is like the moment that this book starts is right as the moment as an invasion is happening of this city and in this world uh humans and insects have like over the generations like grown together and so people are now one of these various like insect like people so you have like the wasp kind the ant kind the spider kind the beetle kind i will say there was like a, a mild fat phobia because the, the one of the guys are like main pov at least in this first chapter he's a beetle kind and so he was like i don't move as fast as he's working with some ants the ant kind uh and they were like you're gonna get your fat butt up and you're gonna do this and you're gonna do that because we're, we're, you, you have to make it out of here um and he was like it motivated him but it hurt his feelings and this first chapter just throws you into it. So we have a lot of death and destruction. We're running to try and make it to this like airfield to get away and like there's destruction. And so the empire in black and gold, I think are the wasp kind people who are essentially trying to dominate this world. And they saw a map of the wasp kind's like domination and it was essentially as far as they knew the world to be um and now we have a group of people who some of them want to come on and become mercenaries because their guild and their their city state has been destroyed and they're like you were always our main hope our main character um so this is very interesting this has like been a book that's intrigued me for a while but it's definitely moved a little bit higher up on the tbr so i would probably say this one is in second place uh, I feel like it would be a little bit more work to read this. Like, I gotta use my big girl brain a little more. Because also, like, there are a lot of words on every page. And, you know, but I enjoy this one. So, next up, I'm gonna actually switch it up. And I'm gonna listen to some audiobooks for some first chapters. So, I have the audiobook for Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Muro, and I have the audiobook for The Final Strife. So I'm going to listen to the audiobook of these while I do a couple of tasks that I need to do, and then I will come back to you with my initial thoughts on these two. So there is very loud music being played next door. If you can hear that, I apologize. Um, I realized at the end of that last clip that there are actually 11 books in the stack and I just wanted to do 10. So I'm not going to be reading the first chapter of Game of Thrones, but I did read the first chapter of three books since we last spoke. Two I listened to on audio, one I read physically. So the one that I read physically was The Gutter Prayer by Gareth Hanrahan. And so between the first chapter and the prologue, I read the first 21 pages. And this was a very interesting reading experience um the prologue is told in like a second person but also as if you were the pov of this building and it's like you did this and and um you did this and and you're burning and your western hall collapses and this is happening to you and you and you and you're aware of the people coming in to you and letting like it's just it's very odd um i think this right now is like a like a 3.5 that first chapter like it the, i was more engaged when we were in that prologue from the point of view of the building than i was when we went to the first chapter because in the first chapter we followed three um 
well really two but there are three people and we see these people at the beginning in the prologue these are three thieves who are coming in to steal some information for this like thieves guild we follow um a stone man a ghoul and a young girl and we get the POV of the young girl and of the stone man in that first chapter and it's very interesting like the way the world and the magic is already uh we're getting those little bits like there are these people who are like made out of candle wax so they like called tallow and they have this burning flame and they can melt and there's this like really great fire and lots of interesting things are happening so it's i bought this ages ago so i honestly couldn't tell you what this is about because i didn't read the synopsis prior to this but it says enter a city of saints and thieves the city of Girdan stands eternal a refuge from the war that rages beyond its borders rages beyond its borders but in the ancient tunnel deep beneath its streets a malevolent power has begun to stir the fate of the city rests in the hands of three thieves they alone stand against the coming darkness as conspiracies unfold and secrets are revealed their friendship will be tested to the limit if they fail all will be lost and the streets of Girardin will run with blood so interesting i don't think this is the one i'm going to end up picking for this particular video but I'm intrigued uh, and it's moved just a tad bit higher on the eternal TBR. Next, uh, let's talk about The Final Strife by Sarah El Arifi. I listened to the audiobook for this one and let me start by saying the audiobook is not it. Like I was aware, wasn't aware prior to Monty reading it, but once he read it, I realized there's a lot of a, like parallels to like a slave narrative in here. Uh, and the first chapter definitely gives like big plantation vibes. Um, so I definitely want to listen to the audiobook for this. I do not like the way that it's narrated. Uh, it made me very uncomfortable and I just wasn't engaged. And it really, 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 really does read like all my life I had to fight slave type narrative. And I don't typically read those. Monty did say that like it switches up about 65% in and that the ending and the reveals are, they end up being worth it. But as of right now for this particular video, I will not be continuing on with this. And when I do continue on, I will be reading this physically. Um, so this one is about this girl growing up in the resistance and she's supposed to spark a revolution. And we have another character who uh, her mother is the most powerful person in the empire. And these two women meet and they like spark a flame that changes this world. Um, and there's like, an in-universe inward and these people are as a I think as a result of a revolt that happened like 400 years ago when they're like two years old there's like this indentured class and their tongues are cut off and their hands are cut off and then they're giving these mobility aids it's like uh them paying for the sins of their forefathers and foremothers it's very interesting but yeah not really feeling the vibes for that and I think it's, it's going downhill a little bit, A, because I might be a little more tired, but B, um, that last one when I read um, The Stardust Thief and I'd read uh, Empire in Black and Gold, like those really, really intrigued me, really pulled me in. And I think it's just, I actually think I want to just read The Stardust Thief, but we're going to continue on with the last four because who knows, maybe, maybe the one will be in those. But last up, I read the first chapter of Ordinary Monsters with J.M. Muro. And I have the audiobook for this one as well. And like the audiobook sounds great, but my problem is I was trying out a new audiobook service. So I was using audiobooks.com and the the audiobooks can only go up to two times speed. And I'm just like, what's the reason for that? And this, uh, the narrator's voice sounds really, really good. But, um, and there's, there was a questionable accent in there, but I did want to speed this up a little bit more than that. So I don't know if I'll be listening to the audiobook for this one either, but I did buy the audiobooks. I don't know. Um, but this is a historical fantasy and it's very interesting because we have like this character with like several years that have gone by in this first book, this first chapter, at least like six or seven years. And we follow this woman who finds this child and she like takes the child and that's her own. But this child is one of the ones that's mentioned in the synopsis that has this like blue light, this blue flame that can hurt you. And we see him use that to protect what he believes is his mother or when he's angry because he doesn't really have control over it. Um, and so there's a man of darkness made of smoke and um, a man who doesn't have any scar on him. And then Marlo is the character that we meet in that first chapter. He's a foundling and he has a strange bluish light that can melt or mend flesh. And somehow these people are going to go together. So I'm definitely very much intrigued to read this. I just want to figure out how I can get the audiobook speed up a little bit because 
it's just too slow for me to listen to it comfortably so if i can't fix that then i'll just be um listening to this one reading this one physically but again i don't think this is the one that's going to be chosen for this challenge all right so we are down to the last three we have we ride the storm by devin madsen the wolf by leo carew and then gardens of the moon by steven erickson so i may read this tonight but i may push it off until the morning because all of these are pretty long this one is like 30 pages um and Malazan, I know to be pretty complex. This one is 16 pages, so maybe I'll read that one. And then this one is 24. So definitely gonna read this tonight. I may push these other two off to tomorrow. We'll see. You'll see when you see my next update. Good morning, friends. So I tapped out a little bit last night, although I did read two, uh, the first chapter of two of the last remaining books and half of the other one, I didn't finish that. So let's just wrap up quickly the first chapter of the last three books. So the first one that I read was Re We Ride the Storm by Devin Madsen, and I really enjoyed this one. This one was very easy to read, so I definitely, it like gives me like the four star feels in that beginning. So in this one, um, War built the Kissian Empire, war would tear it down. 17 years after rebels abandoned the storm the streets, factions divided Kissia. Only the firm hand of the god emperor holds the empire together. But when a shocking betrayal destroys a tense alliance with neighboring Chilte, all that has been won comes crashing down. In Kissia, Prince Miko is a prisoner in her own castle. In Chilte, assassin Cassandra Marius is played by the voices of the dead. And on the borders between nation, Captain Ra Etorin and his warriors are exiles forced to fight in a foreign war or die. So in this first chapter, we follow Princess Miko. And from what we understand, she is, her and her twin brother are in the running to become the heir of this god emperor. And, but it would seem that they might not be his children um, because this new emperor, he overthrew and uh, executed the former emperor. And these two twins, they say that they have the both emperor's blood in them, like the former emperor from their mother's side and then this new emperor from their father's side. But it, it would seem that they might actually be the children of this other emperor, which is kind of why this current emperor is sending all these assassins after them. So this one seems like to have a lot of political intrigue um, and like tense family dynamics because we are on the we're on the road with them traveling to try and uh, secure this alliance with that neighboring nation um, and the nation is pressuring this emperor to declare one of his heirs and there are like three or four people I think in the running and two of them are the twins and they're of course hoping that the boy twin uh, Tanaka I want to say his name um yeah that he is declared the heir but even in this first chapter we've had like two or three assassination attempts on the twins and their their whole life has been played with uh assassins trying to kill them and they say that the assassins are coming from the god emperor so very intrigued by this one this one is like a is given four star feels the next one that I read that I really enjoy, I was gripped. The violence in it was so intriguing. That is The Wolf by Leo Carew or Carew. This is the first book in the Under the North Skies trilogy. Second book is out, third book comes out in December. This one is the premise is like, what if after like the ice age or whatever, humankind wasn't the only species to survive? What if the Neanderthals survived and continued to evolve and so in this uh story we have the neanderthals who are now like the anakin and they are much larger they're like seven feet tall they're really strong all this other thing they're these warlike people and then we have the humans in the southern part of this world and they've had a peace that has lasted a very long time but there's some manipulation going on with the queen and this upstart man and they have manipulated the king into going to war with the with the northerners with the anakin and we in this in that prologue we're getting the pov of like this queen and this man bellamis who is a, a central player in this war he's not titled but he's risen up in the ranks and with his relationship with the king with the queen he has a bit of power and a bit of a bit of influence and uh with when we get to the first chapter it's actually from the pov of the son of the leader of the anakin and in this first chapter we, we like go straight into there on the front lines about to head into this battle it is gory it is bloody betrayals like tricks and i was just like i was so gripped um this was definitely given 4.5 star like this is probably the top in the top two of the first chapters that i read just because also this was longer it was like um 
24 pages so i definitely spent a lot of time with roper who is the son of the of the the black lord i think is what he's called um and i was just really really intrigued by this one and then last but not least the one that took me all night and into today i tried to read it physically i read like the prologue and the first half of the first chapter physically then i switched to the audiobook this morning because i really was just not understanding i really wasn't like comprehending what was going on and this first chapter like i said ends on page 55 and i just don't think my brain is in the space to comprehend this story it is definitely quite complex i honestly couldn't tell you what it's about obviously it's just the first chapter but in this first chapter and in this prologue like we, I've, I've gotten a lot of story in 50 pages so we see this woman interact with this like seer and she is told this prophecy and then the seer is killed by a sorcerer and then the sorcerer is like this girl is important she knows our name we're gonna snatch her up or whatever and then we go to this this beginning part of the first chapter where this commander and this boy are talking and they meet this person who has essentially taken over from the emperor and she later becomes impressed and it is believed that she killed the former emperor and she has these like wraith like things called claws and they are like her band of mercenary men or something to that effect and then um we go like seven years i think in the future and the commander guy interacts with them because they're like something has happened a sorcerer has been here we can trace magic um and he doesn't want us to know and then his commander gets roped into being the under the direct tutelage or whatever of the adjunct to the empress and then he is tasked with going back home and re resting or whatever because he is about to go on this mission i think um it's a no for me dog not right now my brain can't handle this right now i ain't got it in me so the thing is i have two books that are like the top tier and i think what i'm gonna do i'm going to read the second because I, I like obviously i've read the first chapter of 10 different books and so one really early on one towards the end and so like a lot of them are mixed together in my mind so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna read the second chapter and i think we'll be in different povs for both books of the stardust thief and the wolf and then i will come back to you and tell you which book i have chosen to continue on with so yeah one of these is gonna be my 203 of the year i'm excited okay friends i am back for my first update i am 25 percent into the stardust thief so I'm about to start chapter 16, page 116. So initial thoughts, I'm liking it. I'm not liking it quite as much as I like, like that first two, those first two chapters. I will say it is very easy to read um, and I'm very like intrigued by like the gin and the desert setting and it feels like hot. So now it feels like the perfect time to be reading it. So far we mainly follow Mazen, who is the third son of the Sultan, as well as Luli, who is the midnight merchant but we've gotten one chapter from the pov of aisha who is one of the 40 thieves under omar and the 40 thieves um was originally i don't know if it was founded but it used to be led by omar's father the sultan but now it's led by omar and where we are now um the sultan has like captured the midnight merchant he is um forcing her essentially to go on this quest to find this hidden lamp that was what was used to create their city by like the first sultan of this area and the sultan was like this is too much power it's corrupted so he like buried he sent his brother to bury the lamp out in the desert and um because luli um tracks relics and she sells magic he's convinced that she can find it and so she along with the son and Aisha are going to go onto this quest. But there was a question of like, the the character that we're following is Mazen and we're getting a little bit of romance, not romance, but like, you can see the, the potential for the vibes to be there between Luli and Mazen. And so it's like, well, how 
is their relationship going to develop if they're not going on this quest together and something happens and we realize how that is going to happen so i don't want to spoil what that is but there we go and so that is where we are now we were just getting the setup for luli mazen and aisha and their roles in the story we had like a gin attack almost um because omar you know you can be hunted through your blood and omar is like this gin murderer and he's like very well known as that and he's pretty kind of scary not gonna lie um so i'm enjoying it uh, i know where i'm headed into now chapter 16 we're gonna be back in aisha's pov and i'm thinking that maybe the quest is gonna start soon because um the sultan wants to eradicate all the gin he wants to murder all the gin and it's also a problem for luli because her bodyguard um is also a gin so it's like how how is that gonna happen and how is that going to work? Because, you know, obviously she doesn't want to be in prison because selling magical relics is a crime. But she also doesn't want to risk their relationship um, or him being killed. So that's where we are right now. So far, so good. I'm enjoying it right now. It's probably feeling like a 3.5 star. Um, but I'll keep you updated. I'm about to make myself a bagel and a coffee and sit down and do some reading reading because I had a very busy, not busy, but productive morning. I edited and uploaded three videos and I'm finally like getting the vault which is what I call my backlog of videos when I actually have them ready back up. Um, been in July, I've been experimenting like with my content and I think I'm gonna go back to the way I was doing it before because I was trying to do three videos a week, but it hasn't really been worth it and it's a lot of work putting out three videos a week. Um, so I think I'm gonna be going back to two and there might be like two more weeks of three videos just so I can get some of the videos that I've been working on out and then going back to two and that way I have like more time to work on like longer form things and things like that and videos that just take more time to create because I I make I feel like I make more vlogs and sit down than sit down videos but I actually just have more vlog ideas than I have time to execute so hopefully this helps me do that so I'm going to go sit down and do some reading reading so I'll probably come back to you around the 50% mark unless something just incredible happens and I just want to tell you about it so bye okay so it's been a couple hours and I'm back with another update I am now 60% of the way through the Stardust Thief I'm at chapter 39 and for the most part it's more of the same um it's still like a three star right now uh right at the end of the chapter we had a little bit of a plot twist moment and now like for the last 170 so pages we've been on this journey and we've had some issues arise and there's a lot of miscommunication between the people in the group and that's led to several issues let's say uh, I talked to Steph and she was like the last 25% really hooked her. She was like, but she definitely felt similarly. Like it was so easy to put the book down and not go back to it as she was reading. And so the only thing that's getting me through is like that I'm actually sitting down and doing like reading stories with myself. Like if you look right here, I have like Becca's read with me playing. And I've just been using that throughout the day to sit down and focus on reading because it's really not doing a good job of holding my attention, sadly. Uh, but my goal is to... Uh, read another 15% and or at least make it to like the 300 page mark so that I have 160 pages finished tomorrow and I can knock that out um in the morning uh but yeah so far it's not really meeting my expectations and I think part of it is the plot is fine I can be intrigued by a quest but I think the main thing is that the characters are a little bit flat and a little bit boring and like the characters don't really interact even though they're on a quest together, they don't really interact much. It's a lot of tension with between the two groups. So we've got Luli and her bodyguard, who is the Jin Kadir and or Quadir, and then you've got Aisha and Omar. And Aisha and Omar don't really get along. And Omar and Aisha and Omar don't get along. And then Luli and Quadir have had a lot of issues and he always seems to disappear whenever something's going on where about her body needs guard and he's never around. And then these two groups don't really interact with each other much because they have, obviously Luli is being forced to accompany them on this journey. Aisha doesn't really want to be there. She just following the orders of her king and each person has like their own particular journey going on. I also think that 
it might be more interesting if we follow Quadir because he obviously is a djinn so he knows more about the world and more about what's going on and he knows more about like the djinn and the ifrit and the ghouls and he's always off somewhere doing something so I feel like that POV might be interesting might spice things up but right now I'm really not feeling it like if it's not bad so that I want to DNF but I'm just bored like I could like I could literally put this book down and never go back to it never find out what happens and i'll be perfectly fine which saddens me because i went through this whole song and dance of finding the 200th book and choosing this one and all of that so yeah i'm gonna do some more reading and i'll probably update you tomorrow unless something like truly spectacular happens in this next like 15 percent we'll get a 75 percent update and then i'll finish out the vlog all right friends i am back to close out the vlog so i did end up finishing the stardust thief a couple days ago actually and i wanted to sit with my thoughts for a little bit before i brought my final thoughts to you so in the end i'm going to give this a 3.5 star i think that overall it's a pretty solid story and it is a debut so i'm willing to give a little bit more room for grace but i do think that this book would have been served better by like another round of edits like tightening up that middle bit maybe like 50 or 60 pages because like the pace when we go on the quest and once we get really into the quest the pace slows down quite a bit and i think that like shaving off like 50 60 pages really would have helped tighten it up i think the things that worked for me are the world building i really enjoyed like the mythology and the lore and you can tell the chess del is really familiar as someone who isn't familiar you can tell that she is really familiar with the lore and the mythology and like the tales that like this is based on like a thousand and one arabian nights i believe and it's woven in very seamlessly through like the storytelling elements um like having characters that are storytellers having events that happen that uh reflect back on or reference those things like i think that's done really well i think that the characters could be developed a bit more and this is the first book in a trilogy so i'm sure that is to come and i think another big issue for me was that kadir as a character or quadir um he for him to be like a gen bodyguard he was not the best at guarding his charge's body and i feel like so many significant things happen with him off page i think this book also would have been better served by having his pov and maybe like like this is a, t a title that's comparable to David Bat, and maybe like after book one, you know, we got Dara's POV. So maybe in a future installment, we will get his POV. But like he is so much more knowledgeable about the things that are happening in the world and the things that are happening around our characters in the story. That I think that having his insight as the reader, even if the other characters weren't aware of what was going on, would have helped start the story a lot better and would have made it a much more enjoyable and like well-rounded read so overall my 200th read while it wasn't a flop it was not the four or five star book that i was anticipating or hoping for but i am very happy to have read this and have gotten another book on my physical tbr and i have another book to recommend to you all so if you have made it to the end of this video is there like a lamp emoji well yeah if you type in the word lamp an emoji comes up so we're just gonna go with a lamp emoji uh so thank you if you made it to the end of this video let me know how you're doing on your good reads goal i am now uh 144 books i think ahead of schedule which feels quite nice um i definitely feel like i have another 100 books in me but if i don't who cares absolutely no one how many books you've read is perfectly fine uh but yeah Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.